Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again to be here this morning to minister the Word of God. I trust, beloved and friends in the Lord and all my friends across the world, that everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of the situation in the world. My friends, I always say we are living in a very sick, sick world. Hallelujah. Mankind has corrupted this world. But my friends, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ promised that He says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you, even unto the end of the world. And this morning, my friends, I have the great assurance that God, the Holy Spirit, is here with me this morning. He says, I, He is here with me this morning. He says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But no evil shall befall thee, and no plague shall come by thee. This morning, every spirit of witchcraft and, and obia and demonic forces and evil and blights against your life, I destroy under the precious blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus is so efficacious, and the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus repellent and destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every hope of darkness. And right now, my friends, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God, the Holy Spirit is here this morning. And I pray, God, the Holy Spirit, you, you, you wrap me with the anointing from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I am marked with the blood of Jesus. And I pray, God, this morning, as I minister your words, your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be delivered, many will be set free, many will come to know thee as Lord and Savior. Into thy hands I commit my life. And I declare victory in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I magnify, I glorify, I exalt your holy and precious and gracious and wonderful name. My friends, before I start preaching, I always like to pray for the sick. And I know many who are watching me this morning from the living room, from the dining room, from the car, from the kitchen. From the office, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. Wherever you're watching me from this morning, I want to give you the assurance that regardless of what sickness and pain and disease you have this morning, Jesus Christ will be you. If you have a financial need this morning, God will supply that need. If you have whatever sickness you have this morning, if you have a mental sickness or you go through depression or oppression, whatever pressure you go through this morning, God will set you. Right now, those of you watching me, if any are sick this morning, do you, if you're blind, if you're dumb, you're deaf, and you cannot hear, if you have a heart problem, you have a lungs problem, you have a kidney problem, you have high blood pressure, low blood pressure, uh, diabetes, AIDS, COVID, what the case may be this morning, I want to tell you that the doctors have given you up, if you have cancer, I want to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ is still in the healing business. He is still the healer. He is the healer of our soul and he is the healer of our body. And my friends, this morning, Jesus Christ can touch you and heal you and set you free from every sickness and pain this morning. My friends, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to the mountains, be thou cast hence on into the sea, and it will obey you this morning. My friends, just a little faith you need this morning, and Jesus Christ will touch you. There I feel tremendous anointing in this place this morning. Hallelujah. I feel a tremendous anointing in this uh, spark section of the building this morning. And I pray, my friends, God will touch you <coughs> and be you right now in Jesus' name. We you are prepared to receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Right now, I pray in the name of Jesus. Be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My friends, that hope the sunset free is free in me. I see in the spirit realm that many are here this morning. Many are here this morning. I see blind eye open. I see ear dumb ear. I see the dumb talking this morning. I see deaf ear have been popped open. I see people who are doctors have been given up and received a miracle from God. Many, many have received their healing this morning because I can feel that anointing. Right now, please text me or call me and let me know if you're here this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God, my friend. God loves you very much. Jesus loves you when the devil is a liar. The thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ
Christ so that you might have life and life more abundantly. God wants you to have life. I see someone, God has had 15 years to a lifespan. I do not know if the world will last so long, but whatever the years add to your life, you will make it a life in the rapture. You will not see the first death in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yesterday morning, I preached on advice to live, advice from Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to live in these last days. This morning, I will continue with part three in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And tomorrow, I'll speak and explain more about the Holy Spirit. Praise God this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, my friend. It's a joy and great privilege to be here this morning to minister the Word of God. I trust the Lord that this message will be a blessing to your heart. Knowledge. People are, are destroyed for the failure of knowledge. God's people are deceived for a failure of acquiring knowledge of the Word of God. Hallelujah. So deception is one of the elements of being a big beginning of, of sorrows, my friend. Jesus said in Proverbs to see Matthew 24, verse 6 to 8 tells us, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Hallelujah. See that ye be not troubled. Hallelujah. For all these things must come to pass, my friends. Hallelujah. But the end is not yet. I say the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Hallelujah. Praise God. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. I will hear you this morning. Paul made the topic of the beginning of sorrow clear, my friends, when he says, by calling it the perilous times. Perilous times, he even stated what will happen in the second, in second Timothy chapter 3. This is how this know also that in the last days, he says, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Hallelujah. Covetous. Haters, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, hallelujah, truth breakers, policy, false accusers, incontent, my friends, fierce, despisers of those that are good, hallelujah, traitors, heady, high minded, hallelujah, lovers of pleasures, border lovers of God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at the world today, my friends. There are things that are not happening. These are things that are not happening around you, my friends. Hallelujah. And can you see them around you? And that is to tell you that these perilous times are here for us. Hallelujah. People are loving money more than anything else in the world today. I'm not saying it's just start starting in this age. I mean it's in the rate of which it's happening. In this age, it's, it's alarming, my friends. People, people will do anything for cloud people. Hallelujah. People will do anything to be noticed on social media. All these things are an indication that the, the beginning of sorrows and the perilous times have begun. Hallelujah. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. But I want to remind you of one simple truth this morning. Hallelujah. One simple truth, my friends. I want to remind you, hallelujah, that you need to remember this single piece of truth this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God that surpasses all understanding. For example, words. Words. God is. Hallelujah. God is in control. God is in control. I says God is in control and he will be with you even during the day of sorrows. Hallelujah. Whatever the situation, whatever the situation might be these days, I'm telling you, you my friends, that God will not leave you and go into that fight for you to go into that fire alone. God will not let you go through that storm alone. I hear me, my friends, that he, he will always be with you. And that is a promise made by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will never forgotten you. My friends, I remind you from the book of Isaiah 43 verse 2. It tells us, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Hallelujah. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Hallelujah. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Hallelujah. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. Praise God that support me serving. Who else can say a statement 
like this to you, my friends. People will let you down time and time again. But don't put your trust in a person. Don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in God of heaven. One, those eyes are upon you, my friends. You are this child this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto the prayers. Hallelujah. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Hallelujah. God will be with you in, the, in this harsh economy. God will be with you, my friends, in this harsh weather. A natural disaster happening everywhere around the world. God will be with you. These are the words of the Lord. And none of these will go unfulfilled my friends, because his eyes is always upon you. Arlene, if you were born again, you have nothing to be worried about, because Jesus Christ, the shepherd, will always watch over you, my friends. John chapter 10, verse 17, verse John chapter 10, verse 27 to 20 tells us, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, Hallelujah. and I will give unto them eternal life. Hallelujah. They shall never perish. Neither shall man pluck them out of my hands. He says, my friends, hallelujah. Jesus says, no man can pluck them out of his hands. Hallelujah. Book, hallelujah. Look, my friends, you are secure in Christ this morning. The protection of Christ is on you. And he will never allow anything to take you out of his hands. Hallelujah. He is always looking at you and giving you. All you, all you need, my friends. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says, Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Hallelujah. The righteous run it into it. And is and, and safe this morning. You are safe this morning. Just look at these promises that God has made. He will be with you and protect you, my friends. He said he will never leave you. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 31 tells us in verse 6. Be strong and be of good courage. Fear not, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, hallelujah, he is in he, he is he that do it, will go with thee. He will not fear thee nor forsake thee, my friends. Hallelujah. My friends, God will go with you and he will be with you. Hallelujah. Just focus on the promises of God in your life. Listen to this and stop worrying, my friends, this morning. You, you need to stop worrying. Hallelujah. Why are you worrying? You are, you are precious in His sight, my friends. You are a rare gem in the eyes of God this morning. And He will keep you at all times. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 says, Behold the fowls of the air. For they do not, uh, do not, neither do they reap, uh, hallelujah, neither gather into barns. Yet uh, your heavenly Father feedeth them, hallelujah. Ye are much more better this morning than they, my friends, uh, hallelujah. All of the beginning of sorrows have begun. You don't have to live a life uh, of fear, my friends, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, she got a son to the young man, she got a God wants to speak to you. The Bible is a book full of warnings and instructions, my friends. <coughs> Each and every one of the warnings and instructions is in the book. It's written for our own benefit. One of the chapters in the Bible which is full of instructions and warnings is Matthew 24. Our Lord Jesus Christ in this passage, it literally gives you and me advice on how we can live in these last days. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great and mighty? Jesus himself has given you advice on how you can na 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 navigate in this world, how you can live in it. So the title of this message is simple this morning. Advice from Jesus on how to live in the very last days. Hallelujah. God wants us to live. My sermon today will be four points. Points number one, number one. Don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, verse 6 to 8. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Hallelujah. See that ye be not troubled this morning. 
for all these things must come to pass, hallelujah. But the end is not yet, hallelujah. For nation shall rise against nations, hallelujah, and kingdom against kingdom, hallelujah. And the and there shall be famines and pestilences. Are you hearing me, my friends? I want to repeat it in diverse places. Why am I repeating myself? All these things are the beginning of sorrows this morning. Jesus made it clear that all these will be part of the last days, the perilous times. You need to focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith this morning. The truth is that all these things will make life hard. They will make you want to give up. But don't give up. You are constantly hearing of rumors of war. You are constantly hearing about people dying and you don't know what to do. You feel like you are not safe. You feel like you cannot take these evils in the world anymore. Hallelujah. Jesus said you should be discouraged. Because of this, my friends, he says you should not be troubled. Hallelujah. No matter what happens in this world, no matter who, what the government does in the country you live in, you don't, don't be discouraged. Don't live in fear, my friend. Remember that God is still on his throne. Hallelujah. God is with you. Hallelujah. Billy, I believe that if you will all look back on this last 18 months of our lives and we can all testify the fact that God is with us every step of the way. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 tells us, But know this, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, hallelujah. Fear not, hallelujah. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou, thou art mine, hallelujah. Praise God, is that wonderful this morning, my friends. God is our creator. He is the former. He is the, he is the, the former. He is the redeemer. He's a reformer. That's wonderful. God says you are mine. How does that make you feel to know that God says you are mine? Hallelujah. Isn't that great and awesome? You are, you are not the devil. You are not the government. You are not a random social security number. No other. Oh, my friends, God says you are mine this morning. You are hallelujah. You are his this morning. Look at verse 2, Isaiah 43, verse 1, verse when thou passest through the waters, again I say, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. Wow, is that great, my friends? When thou passest through the waters, God says, I will be with thee. Hallelujah. He says, He will be with thee. My friends, he won't send an angel or, or, or a, a, a care package or any human God. He himself will be you, you will he will be with you in the river. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not overflow thee. You have been through the rivers of life. You have been through the fires of life. You do not know who was with you, my friends. But I'm here to tell you, God was with you. When you see the beginning of sorrows in Matthew 24, verse 6 to 8. Don't be troubled. God is still on his throne. And God is still with you, my friends. Hallelujah. Let's teach this for your steps in these last days, my friends. Point number two, my friends. Hallelujah. Do not be defeated. Hallelujah. Do not be defeated. Matthew 24, verse 12, 13. In the King James Version tells us. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hallelujah. But he that shall endure unto the end. Hallelujah. The same shall be saved, my friends. Hallelujah. You cannot allow yourselves to be defeated in these last days. You cannot allow false prophets to lure you into. You cannot allow sin to overcome you, my friends. You need to stay strong in the end. Need to grow strong and become strong in the Lord. You are not allowed to be defeated as a child of God. Hallelujah. The reason why many Christians are not to focus or remain in crisis that they don't know what God has for them after this life. They don't think about the blessings. They, they don't have stored in heaven for them. The world is temporary. The world will fade away. It will never remain. You cannot live forever in this world, my friends. You are not immortal. 
in this flesh. Don't allow the lust of the flesh to overcome you. Don't allow sin to overcome you, my friends. Don't allow the devil to overcome you. You have the strength of God in you. You need to remain strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcome it. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Hallelujah. Even as I also overcome. Hallelujah. And I'm set down with my father in his throne. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is that wonderful? You need to overcome the challenges. You need to overcome all the problems, my friends. You need to overcome all the temptations, my friends. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number three this morning. Don't be deceived. Hallelujah. Therefore, whether you like it or not, live it and be in an age of great deception. The God of this world is a God of deception. He is the father of lies. Is not so. Deception is in, in the DNA. Matthew 24, verse 2 tells us. The King James Version this morning. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Hallelujah. Do not let anyone deceive you. My friends, hallelujah. Each time I read this verse, the words take thee always capture my attention. Hallelujah. The words take thee, my friends, actually mean to pay attention, pay attention, or look intentionally into something. In other words, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us to pay close attention, pay close attention to what to ensure that no man deceives you. I have said it in once. And I will say it again, my friends, one of the worst things about deception is one of the most dangerous things about deception is that the people who are being deceived don't know they are being deceived. Hallelujah. And our Lord Jesus Christ has telling us to pay attention and to be on the lookout to make sure that no man or woman will deceive you. Many people have gone away from the body of Christ because they allow themselves to be deceived. They are now in the, the synagogue of the devil because they believe that someone told them and what not God told them this morning. This is exactly what is in the Bible, what the Bible said, my friends, what will happen. Look at first, uh, the speak, my friends, in the last days in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaking expresses me that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, hallelujah, and doctrines of devils, hallelujah, I rebuke the man of God, don't be surprised when you see people follow strange doctrines today, my friends, the Bible told us, told us about this will happen, don't be shocked, don't be perplexed, believe what the Bible says, my friends, many shall depart from the faith, this is why you see churches that openly encourage adultery and fornication. Churches that openly encourage sexual immorality, my friends. Churches that openly uh, discredited the Bible. Hallelujah. Don't be shocked, my friends. Don't be surprised that the Bible told us that this will happen in the last days. People will give heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Hallelujah. As a child of God, you need to protect yourself. Hallelujah. Because the thing about deception is that most of the time a person who is being deceived does not even know they are being deceived. They are getting, they are doing the right thing. They genuinely believe they are doing the right thing. But Jesus warned. Jesus warned us about deception. Hallelujah. Multiple times in Matthew 24 verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Hallelujah. What Jesus is telling us, my friends, is that in the last days, people will make a, a grand grunts of claims of who they are and what they can do. Hallelujah. People will make a grand of claims and promises. People will even claim to be Jesus himself. People will claim, my friends, that if you give this amount of money, you will be healed. It's not so, my friends. Uh, all sorts of false people you will find, and people will fail, fall for it. Uh, the number one way you can protect yourself from deception is for you to get to know your Bible for yourself, my friends. Uh, get to know the Bible for yourself. Uh, hallelujah. That's the way when anyone moves away from you, my friends. Uh, hallelujah. What the Bible 
Bible says follow. Hallelujah. What the Bible says follow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my friends, you can identify it. You don't need to be rooted in a church because the truth is uh, there are churches that started well, but over time they grew, they watered down the gospel. Hallelujah. Don't be rooted in a person because people change. Be rooted in the word of God. Hallelujah. Unchanging word of God. People can change. Churches can change. My friends, but you know it doesn't. The word of God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 tells us to the law and to the testimony of if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If there is a disagreement between God, Lord, and the word of the messenger, it is in the heart to figure out who is wrong. Hallelujah. The messenger is wrong. Hallelujah. The word judges the messenger. The messenger doesn't judge the word. I believe you this morning. Number four this morning. Don't be doubtful this morning. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 24 verse 34 to 35 tells us in the King James Version of the Bible. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, my friends, but my words will not pass away. Hallelujah. There is something that pleases God more and that is called faith this morning. When you have faith in God, it means you also have faith in His words. Hallelujah. That means you believe in God. But if you allow doubt in you, you will destroy your faith that you have in God. And God will not be pleased with you because it means you don't believe in Him. God is saying that He will make things new for you. And do you believe that word? You are, are you talking in this morning? Jesus says he will go and prepare a place for you in heaven. Do you believe this morning or are you doubting these words? This world will feel everything will go on, but the word of the Lord is something that can never be unfulfilled, my friends. These are things that we have here to tell us about in the last days, not just uh, fictions or ordinary guesswork. They are things that will happen and if they don't happen, the word of Christ will remain and will never fail until it happens, my friends. The word of God will remain, my friends. That is what you should hold on to this morning. That is what you should base everything about your life on. The word of God, my friends. That's a great perfect hallelujah. And it must be perfect and accurate. Don't be doubtful this morning, my friends. A perfect example of this is in the rapture. So many Christians have become more and more doubtful about the rapture. They have listened to people who say people have been preaching about the rapture for decades and it has not happened as yet. A man once said to me, I heard the rapture being preached about 40 years ago and it still hasn't happened as yet. Brothers and sisters, this morning we need to remain and remind ourselves that God does not operate on our timetable. We need to humble ourselves. Hallelujah. God does not operate on our human scale. The events on God's prophetic calendar will make will take place when the appointed time comes. Hallelujah. I hear you. Do not be distracted, my friends. Distraction is one, one thing that makes you miss out on the peace that Jesus will give. Hallelujah. Many things can distract us in this world. They are things the devil is bringing every day to us to go away from Christ. Not that these things are not working, my friends, because people have gone away from Christ already, but we need to make sure we focus on one thing. What is that is Christ? The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 42, the King James Version, Hallelujah. That with which uh, the watch therefore for you know not what uh, our your Lord do it come. Hallelujah. The most important word this morning here is watch. Hallelujah. Stay focused. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted by anything, my friends. Uh, focus on the risk uh, set before you. You are meant to stay alert uh, and remain, remind yourself that the Lord Jesus Christ will return at any time. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says in the King James Version, Hallelujah. Wherefore, seeing we are all compassed about the water with so great a cloud of witnesses, Hallelujah. Let us lay aside every weight, Hallelujah, and the sin which so easily beset us, Hallelujah. Let us run with patience, Hallelujah, the race that is set before us, Hallelujah. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the Santo de Dios. The Lord is the Santo de Dios, the Lord is the Lord. The Lord is the Lord, the Lord is the Lord, the Lord is the Lord, the Santo de Dios. God is speaking to us this morning, my friends. Pray in your closet, pray in your closet. Matthew 6, verse 5 and 6 tells us. And when thou prayest, my friends, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Hallelujah. Very I say unto you, they have the good born. But thou, when thou prayest, my friends, enter into the closet. Hallelujah. And when thou hast shut the door, my friends, pray to thy father, which is in secret. Hallelujah. And thy father will see in secret shall reward thee openly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. One thing we should all know is that the most important thing that we should know is that God doesn't like hypocrites. If you want to pray, your mind is important to God and God searches the mind. Hallelujah. Your intentions are important to God. If you want to pray, my friends, you must not be like the hypocrites. Jesus highlights what we should consider when we pray, my friends. Those looking to annoying, though their own spiritual, spiritual love pray out loud and loud both on the streets in the synagogue. While this might not be as common in the modern era, my friends, it is still possible to pray with an inappropriate concern for how we look or song or other people, my friends. We need to understand what God is telling us. With, with selfish, motivated charity. Jesus says those who pray to show have received all the reward they are going to get. The Father will not honor acts of spiritual pride. This guy is his acts of righteousness. Hallelujah. Even in prayer, one cannot be good for the wrong reasons. Hallelujah. There is, there is a time and place for praying with other believers. But our prayer life is meant to be a prayer in a prayer closet. And as this passage says in your inner room, it means, so I ask you today, what is the motive for the thing you do? In, a, in your day, just like in Jesus' day, there are people who, who, who do good religious activities just because they want to look good in front of other people. They want to be seen and admired for their righteousness. How can I impress my neighbors or friends? How can I show off my church congregation? How can I be recognized as a captain super saint? Go to church, give the poor, say my, my prayers. Jesus says that if you involve in a lot of religious activities just to impress people, then it doesn't mean anything to God. I mean, it's just not what it's about, my friends. Hallelujah. In your, in your motive for going to church or doing some good deed, you know, helping the poor or praying, praying to God to perform some religious duties. If you do doing those things or gain the admiration of people around you, my friends, then it doesn't mean anything to God. What Jesus was talking about, my friends, is you, is you, and I'm not believing like it, believing like hypocrites. Don't pray just because you want people to see what, that you, you know how to pray or to show you're a Christian. You can pray anywhere we find ourselves as long as our motives are pure. But the truth is the best place for you to pray conveniently in your house, my friends. Sometimes you need to cling to calm, calm down and talk deep with God. There are some prayers you can, cannot pray while at work. These are some prayers you cannot pray while you're on the streets, my friends. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praying, my friends, there are some prayers you need to go into your closet.
to pray and with fervency, fervently. There are times you need to, to fight wars in your closet. There are times you need to lock up yourself in a place and start firing prayers into the world, into your world, into the lives of others. Hallelujah. You need to have a place of your own where it is called your battle ground. Hallelujah. Are you me? The place should be in your house, my friends, as we as Christians must know how to create a place for ourselves. We must know how to shift ourselves against the world and pray seriously, serious prayers. Hallelujah. We must know how to close the door and never think about what's outside. But what people pray with fire in us, my friends, and in this age, we are, we as Christians, and we must be fervent with prayer. We might be in a casualty of the, this wicked world, my friends. Any Christian that does not know how to pray, become a prayer for the devil. Hallelujah. This is not the time to be thinking about building a prayer life. It is the time to build more. Hallelujah. My friends, now look at verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, hallelujah, and when thou shut thy door, hallelujah, pray to the Father, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father will see it in secret, shall reward thee openly, hallelujah, praise God, from this verse we see four clear lessons from Jesus, my friends, the first lesson here this morning is when you pray, when you pray, my friends, hallelujah. When you pray, Jesus is not saying if you pray. Hallelujah. He says, when you pray, hallelujah. Isn't that great and mighty? She got our son to the end of the day. God says, we must pray, my friends. We must pray. We must pray. She got our son to the end of the day. God wants us to pray. We must build our prayer lives, hallelujah, and build ourselves in the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer is not an option, option thing, my friends, for us. Believer, it is a command. Hallelujah. Paul closes this first letter to the Thessalonians church with a list of things they need to remember to do. What he says, we must also remember to do these things, he says. What things? The list of things written by Paul, the thing is very small, in a small verse. What is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, he says. Pray without ceasing. Simple. Pray with, without ceasing. Pray is a command. It's not an option. Prayer is a method every child of God fights with, my friends. The most influential person in the world is, 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 is a president, a queen, or a king, or a celebrity. The most influential person in the world is a person who knows how to get a prayer's answer. This is the right time to quit to forget. Christianity is the right time to start praying, my friends, and fight for yourself. Your marriage, fight for your marriage, fight for your family and the world. Hallelujah. This is a time for people to know that they are people called the children of God. I mean, look at your life this morning. Look around you, my friends. Watch the news. Watch the news. Do you like anything you see today? Do you like that the evil ones are taking over the world? You need to wake up now, my friends. We're heading for a tour of World War. Fighting, you need to start fighting God, calling you to be a light of the world. And we create your own war room and fight. Fight the world needs you, my friends, and your family needs you. The neighbors needs you. Don't say that you don't know them. You must go on to fight for yourself and others, my friends. Pray for people just as you will pray for yourself. If you do not, if you're not praying for yourself, it is time to start. It is time for you to become a fire that burns enemies. Hallelujah. Every time you pray, my friends, every demon within a mile radius needs to run. Hallelujah. Stop allowing the devil to influence your life and dictate what goes on in your life, my friends. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not okay with the way the world is going. It's not okay with the way evil is growing and growing in the lives of people this morning. Evil is not creeping into the churches and we are not seeing it. Are you hearing me? 
you should not be okay with it also my friends you should fight with the power of God hallelujah it doesn't matter how deep your closet is it doesn't matter where your closet is this morning Jesus said God will see you there and he will answer your prayers hallelujah pray in the closet and let the world see the manifestation in the open hallelujah Praise God, she can have a son to the end. The second lesson is this morning. Go into your inner room. Close the door this morning. We have been given a location for our prayers. Hallelujah. Don't stand on the rooftop and shout with your prayer. Go to a secret place. Hallelujah. That may be cl close to closet in the room. It may mean you need to drive off the, the park of, of the riverside to spend time with God. Pray for your queen. Pray for the war. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray, pray together with those need to be a time when you need to ask God for yourself. Ask him to God to the Lord in the morning, in the night. True prayer warriors are not those who know how to pray for themselves. Pray for the world. There are those who don't know how to pray for themselves. The world need to know how to pray for the world. Are you ready to become that person this morning that God wants you to become, my friends? You are, are you ready to create a war room for yourself? Are you ready to tackle every power that is against you and your purpose, my friends? Hallelujah. Are you ready to fight and save your, your life in marriage? Are you ready to fight to save your business? Do you think that the, the evil one are happy when you are making progress? No. Do you think that they don't wish evil upon your life? Hallelujah. Let me be the first to bring this to you this morning. The world is an evil, evil world. Hallelujah. There are people who are watching and plotting and waiting for your downfall. This is a time for you to go into your closet, go into your secret place and fight on your knees. Hallelujah. You need to create a war room now. Hallelujah. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't go weak. Have the power in you, my friends. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The third reason is your father is in the secret and sees what is done in secret. Hallelujah. Why is it that Christians sometimes have no faith in God when they do negative things? For instance, if a Christian commits a, a secret sin, they will feel so guilty and they will have full confidence in the fact that God saw them committed that sin. But when it comes to praying, they doubt whether or not God saw them praying in secret. God sees what is done in secret, my friends. Hallelujah. He sees this brings me to my final point this morning. He will reward you, my friends. I say he will reward you. Don't you want to bring a reward from God this morning? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us, But without faith is it possible to please him? For he comes to God, must be believed that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is, is in the business of rewarding those who seek him, my friends, those who want a reward from God. Hallelujah. I'm simply here to encourage you, my friends, this morning. Pray always, pray always, and don't fear, hallelujah. The world needs you, and God wants you to be the light that shines in this world, hallelujah. What is that that we call to do? What are we called to do in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, tells us, and speak a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not fear, hallelujah. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Rishi, my friends. It has been a joy and great privilege once again to be here to minister the word of God. I trust the word of God has been encouragement in these last days. We need to pray and believe God and have faith. We need to learn and be advised from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through his word, how to live in these very last days. We need that. God bless you, Rishi, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Do have a wonderful day.